I'm going to talk to you about leadership today, and it's not going to be pretty. Because leadership is a responsibility, it's not a position. So I walked up to the Boy Scout leader at the end, and I said, excuse me, sir, but could you tell me what that was? And he kind of taps me on the shoulder, and he says, Gary, we call that leadership. Oh, I had a word. A word to start studying. And for some reason, it stirred my soul. I mean, deep down into me, into my DNA, it stirred me. And I started reading books. I started understanding. I started to take every single leadership opportunity that I could possibly take, up to and including getting an ROTC scholarship, going into the United States Army, leading an organization, and then beyond that, into manufacturing with Procter & Gamble, Scott Paper, and all kinds of things, starting my own business. See, we have a problem. And the best way for me to describe the problem it's through tennis. Because <laughs> you see, I learned how to play tennis when I was about 16 or 17 years old. And at 26 years old, I was leaving the Army and going to work at Procter & Gamble in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And I ran into Ross Walker. Ross Walker was a world-class Davis Cup player for England. And he was teaching tennis out in El Paso, Texas, of all places. And I, I got to play a little bit with Ross in doubles. And I went up to him before I left. And I said, would you mind playing a couple of sets with me? Because I've never been on the court with a world-class tennis player, and I would love to do that. So we went out and played. I won a couple of games. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> and I said to Ross one day, I said, we, we finished up, and I said, you know, for eight or ten years I've been trying to hit this forehand, and, and, and my forehand's terrible, and I don't know why. But I work hard at it, because I'm going to tell you something, I'm persistent. In fact, when I found out getting a doctor was more about persistence than brains, I was very excited. Because <laughs> persistence I got. That I got nailed down. So I went, to, I went to Ross, I said, what about that forehand? And he says, well, Gary, he said, well, first of all, you're right, your forehand is terrible. All they have to do is hit three balls there and I win the point. That's why I was hitting your backhand so often, so that you could actually have a rally. I said, thank you, Ross. He's a very kind man. And he said, the reason with your forehand is so bad, it's really simple. It's your grip. <laughs> My grip? You mean to tell me for 10 years I've been hitting balls against the wall, playing in the tennis court, hitting thousands and thousands and thousands of balls, and the only problem was my grip? Who said ignorance is bliss? He said, That's right. You roll your hand back and start hitting it like that, and I guarantee you'll have a better forehand. You see, the problem that we have in most of the things that we do in life is experience alone is a horrible teacher. The ability to build our relationships so we can achieve our goals together. That was my definition for quite some time. About seven years ago, in my second marriage, my wife had a miscarriage. And after five years after that miscarriage, five weeks later, she decided that she needed to leave. I came home from work one day, and she had the car filled, and she said, I have to leave, and she left, and I've seen her twice since. To say that I was devastated would be a huge understatement. I can only describe it this way, is the Chinese proverb that says, that which does not kill us make us stronger. That's not the true translation. The true translation is that which does not destroy us makes us stronger because there are times when things happen in our life that you wish you were dead. About a month after this happened, I went to Prentice Baker's office and I said, look, you guys have been working with me for about a year, year and a half, and I told him what happened with my wife and I and that she left, and I was a basket case. I mean, I couldn't think straight. Imagine if you would, I was sleeping three or four hours a night. I was 15 to 20 pounds lighter than I am right now. I wasn't eating, I wasn't sleeping, I couldn't think straight. And I went to Prentice and I said, look, I know I'm only working here a day a week, but I don't think I can't remember sometimes even what I've done today. I want to make sure that I always add value to you because it's important to me that I add value. So if you see my performance falling off, tell me to go home. Tell me I'll take a leave of absence. I'll just go away. He got up from behind his desk. He walked around and he gave me a hug. And he said to me, 
I'm sorry what you're going through. And he grabbed me by the shoulder, he looked me right in the eye, and he said, you're doing fine, and I'll keep an eye on you. And that's the day that from him I learned compassionate accountability. He didn't leave me, let me off the hook, but he showed such compassion. I would do anything at that point to help him. So my definition now is to build relationships so we can achieve our goals together with compassionate accountability. How often in this business do we see a compassionate accountability? We might see a, we might see a lot of accountability, but where's the compassion? 85% of every single performance problem that you see at work, for somebody that does a pretty good job and all of a sudden they fall apart, 85% of it is because of something happened outside of work. It's a family problem, it's a health problem, it might be drug abuse, it might be financial problems, it could be a whole myriad of things, 85%. And what kind of compassion and understanding are we showing each other if this is a family business to help people get through this life? Because that's what this is about. We can do better because it's the right thing to do. Bob, Prentice, Frank, Brian all said the same thing. I challenge you to start thinking about your organizations and finding ways to help your people get the right grip to do the right thing. Because it's the right thing to do.